Uh, Ryan, so great to meet you. How are you? And uh, how how are how's your day going so far? Wonderful. How are you? Nice to I'm meet great. you. I'm great. Well, yeah, I'm very great. I, listen, I'm a big fan of yours. I've loved all of your doc documentaries, and I, I like especially Dr. Ruth. Got to get, <laughs> got to go there. I, I I got to cover that here in Toronto when she was here for Hot Docs, and spent an hour with her. I, I was in heaven. I can't even yeah. imagine you having all that time with that woman. What that was like. <laughs> oh, I love, I love. She's like my surrogate grandmother at this point. You should see my, my voicemails are always completely full, mailbox full because of doc the, the Dr. Ruth abundance of, of voicemails. But yeah, she's she's very very special. Yeah, she is. Well, so is Pamela. I got to tell you, I've always been Team Pamela Anderson. I have to say, what that woman has endured, um, is unbelievable. And I mm -hmm. wanted to know uh, initially, how did you guys hook up? How did you meet Pamela? How did this whole idea come together for the for the doc? Yeah, I, yeah. It's not like I, I roll in Pamela's orbit in any way. <laughs> so it's, I never, I didn't know her until we started making this documentary. So I'm born in 1981, which means you know Pamela was the most famous person in the world yeah. as I was coming of age. It was as famous as one could be, um, but I didn't know anything about her minus that sort of public caricature and Baywatch and Playboy okay. um, and I hadn't thought about her in a really long time to be honest um, and the idea was pitched to me someone our, our producer Josh Braun had and, and Julia Nottingham who's in England had gotten access to Pamela yeah. um, and they threw out the idea to me and thought I might be a good fit as a director and honestly, I said no at the beginning because I had this image in my head of Pamela as that larger than life caricature. And I just, it came with all these preconceived notions that are totally, totally wrong, but I'll admit them where I just assumed she would be um, like care a lot about how she's perceived and have a lot of agents and managers and publicists around her that would care about what a, a film about her would look like and all of that type of stuff, I usually say no to. Like I say no to a lot of celebrity documentaries and it's mm -hmm. often like the more famous the celebrity, the less appealing it is to me. Understood, yeah. And so they said like, just jump on a Zoom with her and see if you guys are a good personality fit because we think you're gonna really like her. Uh, and so I did and that's, um, that's where all of those preconceived notions were blown up was in this zoom conversation I had with her in 2021. Mm. I didn't even know Pamela was Canadian. Um, you know, really she, interesting. Uh, okay. I, I think most Americans don't, unless I you're like a massive Pamela Anderson fan and you really know her background. I think because she was our California beach babe, we just assume <laughs> that's where yeah. she's from. Um, and so that was super interesting to me off the bat that she was coming from a Zoom on an island in Canada <laughs> where, she had, where she had grown up and she's telling me she had bought her grandma's house on this sort of ranch there on the water. Right. And she was so, she was so incredibly different than what I expected that I just remember thinking like, wow, if we make a film about this woman and she's really like she is on this Zoom, which she proved to be. I think it's going to surprise the hell out of people. And I and I keep hearing that from people that watch the film, like, wow, we really, really did not think that's who the real Pamela Anderson is. Huh. And she's awesome. Yeah. Oh, clearly. I mean, I, I learned things better that I didn't know. And, um, but, uh, you know, I've been following her for many years as well. And I, I, I always thought that she got the bum rap. You know, I, I just felt that maybe as a fellow Canadian, I don't know what it was. But I, you know, as as you're working with her, Ryan, I, I'm wondering because she gave you pretty much carte blanche. You use a lot of footage we've never seen before. Um, there's a lot of Playboy stuff. Like she's, you know, uninhibited as, you know, as whatever. Um, but I found, you know, she was very open with you. But is it true that she just didn't want to see what you did? Like she kind of gave you carte blanche and then just do what you wanted to do, even though she was with you along the way? Oh, no, it's totally true. So Brandon, her son, produced the film. So he yeah. was involved, like, like I remember the first time we went to Canada and we tried to watch as many tapes as possible. So they were all in this attic in her beach, her beach house there. 
And we went up, you go up on a ladder and it's like, oh my God, there's just crates and crates and crates of tapes and journals. And she hasn't cataloged any of that. She didn't even know what was up there. She doesn't go up there, yeah. uh, but Brandon was there with us. And so we were just, we were just voraciously trying to, we, we went and got a, a TV and VCR at the pawn shop. And we were just trying to watch as much as possible in that like two days that we were there. And we took back what we could from that first trip in a in a, um, a carry on suitcase because obviously yeah. we weren't going to check it. Right. And Pamela Pamela felt very comfortable uh, because Brandon was going with us, so she knew like the custodianship of that footage was with her son because um, she didn't know me that well at that point. Then, of course, over the over the course of the next years, once she she trusted me a lot more, we actually drove back a cargo van from Vancouver Island to Los Angeles because we had so much archival. That was mostly the journals and diaries because she has so many. And yeah, I mean, she would find them everywhere. She would like open up a safe and it would be stacked to the top with journals. And she would say, I have no idea what those are, but you're welcome to take them. She had she had made the decision that she wasn't going to use her diaries and journals to write her memoir. So right. I said like, well, to me, this is a really amazing storytelling device. If we have your voice at the time that you went through all of these things. And I, I mean, I can't imagine, I still think, uh, you know, Pamela, I don't know. She, I think she has a few, few screw, screws loose in the sense that she's so open. Like, why would you ever give all of your diaries and journals? I can't imagine how embarrassing that right. would be for almost everyone to have, you know, strangers read your inner thoughts from your entire life. But for that's sure. just Pamela. She's 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 unapologetically herself in every way, and right. she played no role. She had no. She's she just watched the film um, the other day, so she finally okay. did watch it, and that was the moment she found out all of those diary entries ever. She hadn't seen any of that archival footage, minus the few tapes that we have her popping in in the movie. Yeah. So that's when she saw it all for the first time and how it was used. So remarkably uncontrolling, um, especially for a celebrity of her stature. What I was going to ask you is this. I mean, she has weathered so much throughout the years. There's no question. And we see this in the film, like it's beyond what she's been through, especially with her choice of men and how many times she's been married and all the bad boys that she marries and everything. It's just extraordinary to me. Um, and she explains, she talks about that in the movie and I don't want to give that away. Um, but she seems to kind of blow it off a bit and she has this little kind of, she laughs at it a little bit, like always. She Is that kind of like a defense mechanism for her? Like I'm wondering, when the camera wasn't rolling, was she crying? I can't imagine her getting through a lot of this with just having that sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's interesting because I, I to, to the beginning of our conversation, I saw this a lot with Dr. Ruth as well when I was making that film and someone who's had an incredibly hard life like Dr. Ruth. I mean, what yeah. worse than being a Holocaust survivor and losing your entire family? Um, and Dr. Ruth was very much, they're very similar in the sense that they are the ultimate optimists. Um, right. They yeah. are, they are romantics in every way. And I don't just mean romantic love. Like they right. want, um, they always want, they're so hopeful, both of them. Um, and they both have that same, I would call it a defense mechanism, but I think it's a survival mechanism. Um, yeah. And Pamela, I get that. I think a lot of people, a lot of people have that. And I didn't feel like, I felt like it was revealing in itself how she reacts to those things. And, um, you know, I didn't feel the need to, to break that down or have my Barbara Walters moment. Sure. With Pamela, I like watching people survive, uh, survive the way that they've chosen to survive. And no, there weren't, there weren't moments. I mean, I, Pamela is, was 100% on camera, the, the exact same way she was off camera. In fact, I don't, I think often Pamela didn't even know when we were rolling the cameras or when we weren't because she's not, she's not really a performer. Um, yeah, yeah. you know, and so she was very difficult to direct in some ways because of that. Like, she's yeah. not like an actor that knows when the camera's rolling or knows where they are, knows she would never put a microphone on. So we were always just kind of following Pamela around 
her property as she talked. And I think she she was very unaware of what was being recorded and what wasn't. So no, I mean, you never you never really saw Pamela break down until the Hulu show came out. And those- oh, that, that's a whole movie in itself. Like, honestly, we could talk for hours about that. And I know I have to wrap in a minute, but I, yeah, that whole, yeah, that, uh, that's just unbelievable, that whole story there. And I can't believe it. Um, and just lastly, I have to ask you, because at the end of the day, her greatest glory, her greatest achievement are those two boys and how much they love her and support her. And Brandon being a producer, I mean, just, you know, is another step, but how hard was it for them to go through and watch half of this stuff about their mom? Well, I mean, Dylan, Dylan just watched it for the first time with his mom. The, so the two of them watched it together. And I know it was an emotional experience for both of them. Brandon was a part, you know, he's a producer. So he watched, he watched cuts along the way. And I remember at times um, having to uh, pause the film or, looking over at Brandon, you know, because we would watch the cuts in my office, looking over at Brandon and just tears streaming down his face. And I can't, I can't imagine because their mom is so open and raw and she's willing to share some of those horribly traumatic moments that you as a son would never find out about, except if your mom was doing a documentary or writing a book and they didn't they didn't know these things about things she went through as a child um but i i have to give brandon a lot of credit cuz he he weathered that storm and he he understood that um his mom being this vulnerable and raw was going to help the audience understand the yeah. fully dimensional pamela yeah. so well, yeah listen you've done an extraordinary job with this honestly i i thought it was phenomenal and I can't wait to get the word out there so congratulations come back and visit us in Toronto again and uh have a great weekend thank you for your Love time that. today Ryan I appreciate thank you, it Bonnie. take okay. care take care bye-bye